In this video, I'm going to be talking about a system uh, known as Artifactory. Uh, and what Artifactory can be used for is to allow the ability to cache uh, packages, chocolate packages, locally into your own environment rather than consuming them from chocolate.org. Now, there's a couple of reasons uh, that that's an important thing to be able to do. Uh, the first one is that uh, sometimes, uh, like other uh, websites, chocolate.org goes away. So if you take a dependency on uh, chocolate.org, there's no guarantee that the packages that you're going to be installing is uh, going to be available. Now, we try our best. Uh, but we can't guarantee that that's always going to be available. So if you've got a system critical uh, setup that requires these packages to always be installed, then it's in your best own best interests to cache those packages locally so that you can consume them from an alternate feed as opposed to from chocolate.org. The second reason uh, that this could be important is that we recently added a rate limiting feature onto chocolate.org itself. Uh, this is in addition to the excessive use uh, policy that we have within, on chocolate.org. So from an excessive use point of view, uh, if you install too many things over a 30-day 30 30 period, we will apply a, uh, a ban to that IP address, and you would, we will have to reach out to the chocolate.org team in order to have that IP address ban lifted. Now, the, the rate limiting feature that was added to chocolate.org is for uh, individual package installations. So if you install chocolate itself more than five times within a one minute period, uh, you, the rate limit will be applied to your IP address. And what will happen is that you'll have to wait an hour for that ban to be automatically lifted. Now, that's for the chocolate package itself, uh, but also if you install any packages more than 20 times within a minute, uh, that same rate limiting uh, ban will apply to that IP address. So again, if you use something like Artifactory, you'll be able to cache those packages locally so that you're not reaching out to chocolate.org uh, and that installation will always work. Now, uh, Artifactory is not the only system that can do this. There are other ones, uh, for example, uh, Nexus and ProGet. Uh, but the one we're going to talk about here uh, today is Artifactory itself. So on the VM that I've got behind me here, uh, all I've done so far is I've installed uh, Chocolate itself so I can uh, do what I need to do. And the other thing I've installed so that I, you didn't have to see me uh, doing it is I've installed uh, Artifactory. Now, I have installed the Artifactory Pro package from Chocolate.org. The reason I did this is because there is a free version of Artifactory, but it's limited in the sense that it doesn't have all the different types of repositories uh, available. Uh, now, the one that we're interested in is creating a NuGet repository, uh, and that's not available in the free version, so I have had to use the Pro edition. Uh, so in the output uh, of the uh, package installation here, we can see that uh, this is the URL that I'm going to be able to access uh, Artifactory on, and I can see that over here. Now, when you first install Artifactory, you will be prompted for a, uh, a trial key or uh, a license key that you've purchased uh, from uh, JFrog themselves. So in this example, I'm just using a trial edition, uh, and you can see up here that it's going to be expiring within the next nine days. So what I'm going to go do now is I'm going to walk through the process of creating a, uh, a series of repositories that will allow me to both uh, download and cache packages from chocolate.org, uh, but will also allow me to uh, push my own packages that I'm creating to my local feed so that I can consume them from there as well. So uh, out of the box, uh, there's only one uh, repository created uh, by default here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to create one of each of these types. There's local, there's remote, and there's virtual. And we'll, we'll discuss what they're doing uh, in a little bit. So let's just go ahead and create a local one. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click on the new up here. And then I'm going to give it a I'm going to pick a, a type. So these are all the types that are available in the uh, Pro edition of Artifactory. The one I'm interested in is NuGet here. So if I click that and then give it a repository key of uh, chocolatey, and then we'll just prefix it with local so that we can indicate what's going on. Uh, and I'm going to leave the rest uh, just as default at the minute. I'm going to click save and finish. Review. Okay, so that's that one created. Uh, if we go back over here into this panel, we can then say that I want to create a remote one. So a remote one is the one that's going to proxy to chocolatey.org. So the one that we just created is one that's hosted directly within um, th this running instance of Artifactory. This one is going to proxy to 
uh, chocolatey.org itself. So I'm going to give it uh, chocolatey, and then I'm going to call it remote. And then uh, the URL by default is going to be NuGet because that's the type that I picked, but I'm going to change that to be uh, chocolatey. And then I'm going to leave everything else the same with the exception of uh, this one here, because this one here, we, there is no uh, v3 feed available on chocolate.org currently. There's only the uh, v2 feed available. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click save and finish on that. And then I'm going to create one more feed, uh, which is of the type uh, virtual. So the virtual feed is one that can actually uh, co-mingle multiple other repositories. So in this case, I'm going to create it with a name of chocolatey virtual. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to say that I want to include the, both the local one and the remote one. So that means I've got one feed that will actually make available all the packages from the remote feed and from the local feed. So rather than having to have multiple sources defined within Chocolatey, I can actually just have one. So if we go back to the homepage here, we can then click on through into the virtual one. And what we'll get here is uh, more information about it, what the URL is, uh, what the API key is for uh, accessing it, that sort of thing. So the, the one thing that I'm interested in just now is this URL. So I'm just going to grab this URL. I've got a little bit extra there, but that's fine. Uh, so if I go back down to here and clear this out, uh, that started off something I didn't want. So I'll just clear this out. So if I, at the minute, if I run the choco source command, then what we'll see is that out of the box, chocolatey comes uh, pre-configured to point at the community package repository. If I uh, run another command, which is chocolate source minus H, we can see lots of information about what that source command actually allows. And the thing that we're interested in is actually up here. So the recommendation when you're uh, using uh, your own internal feed uh, is really to, to, to not use the default chocolate feed. So we actually want to remove it. So that's what we're going to do with this command here. So if we do choco source remove, that's remote, uh, with the name of chocolatey, then we can actually remove that uh, feed from our configuration. So if I run chocolate source again, what we'll see is that we don't, we no longer have any sources defined. Uh, if we go back up and look at the available examples that the chocolate source command provides us with, then we have the option of adding another one. So what we need is a name and we need a source. So the source is what I copied from uh, the Nexus, uh, the artifactor configuration. So if I go ahead and say chocolate source add with a name, uh, we'll just call it artifactory. And then the source is going to be equal to what I had in my clipboard with the exception of the bit that was extra at the start. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So now if I run my chocolate source command, I should have one source defined, which is my local source. Now at the minute, if I go ahead and go into the repository browser, we'll see that actually there are no packages. So there's no, I don't have any packages available to install. But what we set up was that this uh, remote repository is a proxy to chocolate.org. So what's going to happen is if I attempt to install something from that source, if it doesn't exist locally, it's going to reach out to that proxy, chocolate.org, and it's going to pull it down and make it available within this artifactory repository. So the package that I'm interested in, in installing uh, is this one, Visual Studio Code. Okay, I'm going to use that in a subsequent demo uh, as we progress through this. So I want to install uh, Visual Studio Code. So if I just, as normal, if I do choco install VS Code, and then the version was 1.30.1, .1, I think it was. It was. So if we go ahead and install this, What's going to happen is it's going to reach out to uh, the, the, the source that we have defined, which is that virtual repository that we created. It's going to see that that package isn't available. And it's going to say, right, what, where else can I get that package from? In this case, it's going to be the proxy repository that is chocolate.org. It's going to download that into my Artifactory repository instance, and then it's going to do the install. So while that's happening, if I jump back to Artifactory here, and then refresh this page, what we should see is that now within my virtual repository, uh, I have the, that VS Code package that I just installed. 
Uh, now you'll also see that it's got some other packages in there. So these are actually marked as dependencies of the VS Code package itself. So in order to install VS Code, I need to install the code extension and .NET Framework 5.4.5.2. Uh, so because of that, uh, Artifactory or uh, has downloaded those dependencies into uh, this Artifactory instance and then makes them available. So that's the virtual repository view. But then if you look at the local, uh, the remote uh, example, you can see those packages there as well. So if on another machine, on in my environment, I were to do the same uh, exact process that I've done here, which is to install uh, the source that is that virtual repository, and I run the choco install command for VS Code, it's not going to reach out to chocolate.org anymore. It's going to install it from Artifactory. So you've then got the most resilient uh, mechanism to install that package, as well as avoiding the rate limiting uh, uh, the rate limits that have been applied to chocolate.org. So within this 10 minute video that we've got uh, going here so far, what we've been able to do is we've been able to install Artifactory and configure it in such a way that we have a mechanism of caching those packages. And especially in an organizational environment, this is the recommended way uh, to uh, consume chocolate packages. We're not necessarily saying that you have to use Artifactory, obviously, uh, but certainly our mechanism to cache those packages is uh, certainly uh, advised. So the second thing that I want to talk about is uh, creating and pushing your own packages. So let's uh, go ahead and create a directory here for uh, just testing something out. We're going to create a C temp folder and then we're going to CD into that C temp folder. And what we're going to do is I'm going to use uh, Visual Studio Code that I just installed. So Visual Studio Code has the ability via a code extension, a uh, VS Code extension, to actually create and uh, uh, create and pack and push chocolate packages. So what we're going to show here, I'm just going to quickly change the theme to make it a little bit easier for the video to show, um, is everything I'm going to show here could be done in the uh, CLI. It's just slightly easier to describe it and show what's happening uh, with, the me with, the, uh, with the means of uh, a VS Code editor. So if I go up to the marketplace here and click on uh, this chocolate package that I've searched for, I can install that and then click reload and I'll then have some uh, commands that I can use to create and push packages. Now the one thing I'm going to need to do before I do that is I need to configure uh, the API key that I'm going to use uh, to push packages to my feed. So if we go back to the home page here and I look at the chocolatey local feed that I have here uh, and I type in my administrator password, what I'll be able to see are the API keys that I can use to push packages to this feed. So the one I, the part that I'm interested in is this part here. I can grab all of it. Which I don't seem to be able to. So let's just grab that part. And the first part is admin. So if I go over here and I run the choco API key command, <coughs> what we'll see is there are no API keys saved uh, currently in my environment. But if I go up to the help command for API key, we'll see that the examples up here show how we can add a source with a key. So if we run that chocolate API key uh, with a source and with a key, so the key is what I have in my clipboard and the source is going to be the URL that's available here. Again, if I just copy that and go to the command line, I'm going to paste that in here. I've lost the local off the end and it's got an extra bit at the start again. <coughs> so if we run Choco API key, what we should hopefully find is that there is a, a source defined 
that has an authenticated uh, API key saved with it. So what that's going to allow us to do is we go over to uh, Chocolatey extension within Visual Studio Code, and I go to the command palette and type Choco. We've then got these commands available. So the one that I'm interested in to start with is creating my own chocolate package. So if I click on that, what this is going to do is I'm going to give it a name of test package, and it's going to scaffold out a new package with the default template that comes with Chocolate. So that includes uh, lots of files that we're not actually interested in uh, right now, because the only thing I'm interested in uh, right now is uh, showing how a package can be pushed to the repository rather than actually installing a package. So I'm just going to delete all the files that I know I'm not going to need. And then if we go into the uh, chocolate install.ps1 file, and I'm just going to uh, say, uh, collect all that and uh, delete it, and I'm just going to give write host with uh, install happened successfully. And I'll go ahead and save that. And then the one change I need to make in my new spec file that was templated out is to actually give it a version number. So I'm just going to give it the version number of 123. So with that done, if I go back to the command palette and type choco again, then I've got the ability to use the choco pack command. So choco pack command will then list out the available new specs within the current uh, workspace. So I just uh, select that first one, and I'm not going to give it any additional arguments, but what that will give me is a generated nutkeg. So what I want to be able to do is to push that to my Artifactory instance. So again, if I walk up to the command palette, then there's a push one here it will list out all of the nutkegs that are currently available in the workspace. Again, I'll be prompted uh, for which source I want to use. <clears throat> so the source that we defined and we saved the API key for uh, is this one. Uh, so if I click on that, I'll be prompted for additional arguments. I'm just going to say no. And Chocolate will then take that package and push it to Art Factory. So now if I go back to here and I go back to the package browser that is on a repository browser, what I should see in my virtual is I've now got this uh, test package available. So again, the virtual one is the one that's co-mingling both the local and the remote. So that's why I can see it here. But I've also expand uh, the chocolate local. I've then got that test package ready for consumption. So to finalize that, we go back to the command line here and do choco install test package. And I spell it correctly. What we'll see is that package will be uh, brought down from Artifactory and it will be installed. So the only installation that we had was a write host. So that's what this part here is. So install happened successfully. Obviously on a, a, an actual package, it would be uh, installing an MSI or installing an EXE or doing something else. Uh, but for the purposes of this demonstration, it doesn't actually do anything. But what we have shown is that within the scope of uh, setting up Artifactory, we've now got the ability to create and push packages to this Artifactory instance, as well as consume packages from the upstream uh, proxy.chocolate.org, all of which means that we can have uh, reliable, repeatable installations within our uh, environment or organization uh, without the concern of either that upstream repository being down when we need it, uh, but also no longer being subject to the rate limiting. Uh, so for the purposes of an organization, this is an ideal uh, scenario. Uh, so this is how you can do it with uh, Artifactory. I've already got a video available, which I'll include in the show notes of this video for how you can do this with a uh, Nexus repository. Uh, and I'm also going to have a subsequent video for showing how it can be done with ProGet. Uh, so hopefully this is going to be of use to you. Uh, if not, uh, feel free to reach out and uh, tell me why, uh, and I will do my best to make it better. Thank you very much.